Alright, so I just got a package in the mail from Sky Costumes. It's a site where you can buy like cosplay costumes and a whole bunch of different props and stuff. Um, I'll put the link in the description, but I did receive a package uh, for the Mandalorian. It came in a couple bags. There's two different options. At first, I did choose the wrong one, but I'm kind of glad I did choose it. Uh, there's two options. The first one is just the flight suit so like his shirt and pants that he wears underneath all the beskar armor and everything and then the other package or other option is the same clothing but with all the extra pieces like gloves uh the leather leather pieces like i made for my mandalorian uh here are some of the extra pieces like this is his belt that goes around his waist there's, there's a couple other leather pieces like for example this one this is for his, one of his shoulders. That's for the other shoulder. I'm probably not going to use these. I'm just going to be getting the 3D printed uh, Beskar and attaching it to it. There's ones that go on his shin, like right here. And then there's some that goes on his knee, that little blaster thing. Yes, this mannequin was a female body, but I did cut it up. I don't know if I showed in one of the previous videos. I did cut it up to like modify it to kind of shape me. Where, for example, this is one of the parts that go on the chest. Uh, I, I cut it off. I threw the other one away, but then I also thought of it after. I can use this as a bowl for like holding all the epoxy that I, I've used and stuff. Um... But this is what the Mando suit looks like. So this is the flight suit. It, it feels like a good quality material. Um, it, I got a double XL. I don't know my exact height now. I'll let, I'll find out later. Um, but I got a double XL. The reason why I'd rather go bigger and have a lot of extra room to play with just in case either I want to wear something underneath if it's cold out or if I want to, um, if I want to wear something underneath, or if it's when it's like cold out, if I wear it outside, or another thing is the reason why I would go big, because if I say I ordered, say I ordered an extra large, and I, it gets in, but there's only a little bit of room to play with, like I won't be able to move my arms as much, I won't be able to like, like bend over and kneel down on the ground, like it might be too tight, so I got a double XL. And there is one thing that I've noticed so far. So on the this piece, the cloth, this is supposed to go, this goes around your neck. This is the front of it. The zipper right here goes straight down the back side. Um, when I put this on, I've only worn it this this whole thing once. Um, when I tried lifting my arms, like it that's as high as I can lift it like it stops it down over here and like it's kind of like restricting in a way I don't know but when I put it on backwards so like this zipper was down the front right here and it was just folded over like a collar um it felt more comfortable like I can go like this with my arm move do a lot more stuff with it um this is just like a cushion. I'm probably going to keep this just how it looks, but I'm still going to attach probably the Beskar to it and stuff. It did come with Velcro right here. And those pieces that I showed you earlier that go on the shoulder has Velcro on as well. So it, it sticks to it. Um, this is the Mandalorian leather pieces that I built and like or modified and put on for mine. The one that they came with is right there. It is a, it does look almost the same color. Let's get a piece out here. A small thing. Here we go. So like, for example, I think this is one of the pieces that go around my thigh. Um, it is a little bit darker if you can see the color, but this is like a thicker leather than like this piece. And same with the holster. It's the same color, but it's a little bit bigger than this one, but it's also thick and it doesn't really move as much. Uh, it also didn't look like there was enough room for my blaster to fall, slide in. So I'm going to keep mine as primary. And if I need to, I can switch over to these ones as a, as a backup. Um, these are the gloves it came with. I think they're pretty good quality. 
they're pretty decent. Like they fit my hands and I have pretty big hands. Um, it, it's not really tight around the fingers. It's a little bit, but it hold, it actually holds on. It's, it's leather as you can hear. Me. So it does have some good grip. Like nothing's going to slide out of my hand if I try, even if I'm pinching it. Um, these pieces are sewn on. I don't know if I'm going to use either my X-Acto and cut those pieces out or if I'm just going to get the pieces from the 3D print and just glue it straight to this, like on top of this. Uh, I did pick up some new glue right here. I did pick up some new glue so I can use this on the Mandalorian. The pieces that I'm going to be using for like the chest part because it has it's supposed to have two pieces, which this is what it looks like kind of. This piece and the chest, I want to have be able to move so I can like lean over and stuff. So I'm going to have them separate and have either elastic like rubber band type thing in the back of it. So it can like bend and like spring kind of in a way. Um, other than that, I really like how this is coming out. And now I am just waiting on the rest of the prints. And the rest of the prints are the helmet, the shoulder pads the wrist parts the chest pieces the knees the jetpack which would go in the back here i'll probably have the jetpack be able to have like those clips kind of I, I don't have any nearby but like kind of like something like this but like those plastic ones that are like car seats and stuff just like i push the sides and it pops out the only reason is because I'm going to have to get this this leather piece on and then the jetpack on top of it so this isn't showing over the jetpack. So this is all the Espresso brown spray paint with, I did three coats of the brown, let that dry, and then I did three coats on the clear coat. I'll put the links in the description. You guys can see me. Hi. Um, so all this right here is all going to be like that graphite kind of like, not chrome, but like a dark, bright gray. Um, this is all going to be the same color. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to be taping and taping off from where my hand is right here to right here. I'm going to be taping all this off, including this. And then this whole piece in the middle right here is going to begin the same treatment as what this piece did. And I do like how it has like a nice, let me make it a little bit brighter. There you go. It's a nice crisp stop all the way around. It didn't have, I had barely any bleed through. So I don't know if I let, showed you guys where I left off last, but I did paint this piece silver, which I used this stuff, the rub and buff. Um, and I did it to this piece as well, and this piece. I did go over this in, this entire thing right here with the black primer spray paint again, just to get rid of like the, the color parts that were like, when I sanded it, it got a little bit of white on it. Uh, I'm taping off right here with painter's tape all the way around. And what I'm gonna be doing next is using the antique gold and painting these pieces gold. These, these like poles right here are gold, but they're kind of, they kind of like a standout different gold than what this is going to look like. This is going to look like bright gold, kind of yellow. But this is going to look like like antique gold. I don't know. It, it just has like that old kind of golden look. Once those are done, I think the circle is gold as well. Uh, but like under here, I won't be able to reach under there with anything. So I did pick up these uh, paint brushes, not sponsored. Uh, they were just cheap, a couple cheap ones that I got at the grocery store. And I'm going to try using those to like get underneath there. Because I did have trouble when I was painting like this, like in here, this crack right there. Like inside here. Because I didn't have anything to go in there. So what I did is I took newspaper. I kind of like doubled it up though. Dipped it in the, the paint and I had roll, rounded it like that. And I just went like this and went back and forth. Alright, so here's a little update. Um, I left off, I had to do the gold accents on the rifle. And 
do some clear coats. I did get a car little bit carried away and I didn't record any of it, but I did finish doing that part. Um, but there was an accident this morning. I accidentally bumped the rifle and it fell and it broke in a couple different spots. So it is a little bit of a setback, but other than that, it's like 90% done. So this is what it is so far. So right across here, snapped. So it's right now it's glued and there's just tape on both sides holding it straight. Um, another breakage link is right there, that thin line. It snaps straight through because this whole pipe is a hollow piece. Um, so I'm going to be getting, printing two more of these like links, the circle things, just to cover up and hold this piece like that. And then another breakage is right here. You can see the white. Um, uh, my gun does have an extra one already right here because the t this pipe already, or this tube already broke uh, once when I first was putting the gun together. Um, but I'll just, what I did is it's a circle. So I took it, I cut it right in half and then I put, I glued it on both sides to hold it together. Um, and then other than that, everything is done on the gun. It has the graphite coat on this piece all the way around and it has tape keeping it so the graphite doesn't get everywhere underneath here is the gold and underneath this whole piece all the way around onto the other side is gold um it is done right now but i don't have enough time to finish this up right now so i'll do it later on but i just need to wipe all get all the loose uh graphite powder off of this whole piece right here then I can take all this tape off and do another clear coat on this whole thing. And then the whole blaster will be done. Yes, the trigger still works. The magazine does lift up and down. Um, other than the little setback, like I said this morning, it cracked here and here. There. Uh, and there. It did split right there. You can see a little bit of a gap right there. But I can't put it together without possibly breaking something down on this end or on this end. So I'm just going to leave it as is because no one's really going to look into it and look in depth on it. They're just going to look at the whole rifle as one whole piece. Once I do the clear coat on this whole thing, then the rifle will be done. The blasters are already done. This is what I have so far on the suit. I didn't show you guys, but the package also came with like this fabric, like a blanket type thing. And it came with two safety pins that are inside right here. I don't know if I did the cape right. I just winged it. But... Other than that, the whole suit is done. Now I just need to wait for the helmet and all the Beskar armor that, like the shoulders, the parts that go on his wrist, chest piece, all the all the parts that go on all over him. Then after that's done, I can graphite it, and then the whole Mandalorian suit will be done.